Hey guys, my name is Will Dusan, and I want to tell you a little bit about one of my 10 Zambian boys named Francis. So, Francis Mbiwe was one of the 10 boys in my camp life group when uh, I went last year to Zambia for my first time. And so kind of how your group situation works, you're given a mixture of both sponsored and unsponsored kids. So what this means is the sponsored kids are kids who are in school at these private family legacy Christian academies, and they have been in school for some time, and unsponsored kids are not. So these academies are really kind of the only form of legitimate education in Zambia. These are professionally trained Zambian teachers, and the student to faculty ratios are, are normal 25 to 1, 30 to 1. And that's amazing compared to what the government school situation looks like, often 100 to 1, 175 to 1 ratio student to faculty. So anyways, generally your sponsor kids in your group, because they've been in school, hold themselves a little bit taller, they're naturally more confident, kind of the natural leaders of the group, they even know a little bit of English. And Francis had all of these characteristics, so I assumed he was sponsored. So when I talked to him one-on-one, -on -one, I was shocked to find out that he had actually never been to school in his entire life. So I asked him, well, Francis, how do you, how do you know so much English then? Because he probably knew more English than the other nine boys combined. And Francis told me that when he was young, his mother could not afford to send him and his four sisters to school, but she wanted them to be educated, so she took it upon herself to start teaching them English. So anyways, that really resonated with me, and I knew that Francis was a very bright kid, and I needed to snatch him up right there. And by that, I mean sponsor him myself when I got back to America. So I did just that, uh, and me and Francis kept in touch throughout the year, wrote letters to each other every few weeks, but I was really excited to get back to Zambia the next year to really see how uh, a year of school and these education system had actually affected him. So anyways, flash forward to about a month ago, I've returned to Zambia for my second time, and I was thrilled to find out that Francis had actually placed directly into the sixth grade, despite having never been to school in his entire life. Um, yeah, that's, that's really unheard of. Uh, that actually puts him on pace to graduate at the same time that a normal 11-year-old boy in America would. So I'm pretty excited about that. But anyways, I, I was thrilled to see him again, and when I was talking to him, I said, well, Francis, like, are you enjoying school? And he looked up at me and said, yes, Uncle Will, I'm enjoying it very much. <laughs> By the way, they call you Uncle and Auntie when you're there. And I said, well, Francis, uh, have you thought any bit about what you want to do when you, uh, when you grow up? And he looked at me and he said, well, I want to be a gospel singer. And I said, well, I thought about this for a second, and then I thought, well, maybe this is because I had told the kids a little bit earlier in the day that I am currently in college studying music. Side note, pray for me. But um, <laughs> I thought maybe he was just like trying to, to mirror me. Um, but he went on to elaborate and said that in his last year and being in school, he had really grown in his faith, and this was something he really felt called to do. So... Anyways, a few days later, uh, we have this one day of camp where we actually get to go out into the communities where these kids live, these compounds, and they love it. They walk around with you. They get to show off their white person to everybody, <laughs> and, you, and you walk around and evangelize and share the gospel with these people who are not at camp life. So anyways, we walked up to one, one of these. There was an old man, and we walked up to him, and we started talking to him, and at the end, we always ask, well, is there anything that we can pray for you for? And this old man went on to explain that he had not eaten in three days, and so just to pray for food to come his way. And Francis is right here on, by my side translating all this into my ear because he's essentially bilingual at this point. And then Francis pulls me aside and says, well, you, you know what, Uncle Will? This is, this is very sad. And I said, yes, Francis, it is. And he said, well, I think that when you give me my lunch a little bit later, I will, I will take my bread and my sip-sip, which is the drink we give them. I will take my bread and my sip-sip, and I will give it to this man. And I just kind of, I, I just didn't know what to say. Because for these kids, this food that we give them at camp is, is oftentimes the only time they're eating all day. And so for the fact that, the fact that he was so selfless in wanting to, to put others before himself really was a testament to his true character. So anyways, what does this all mean? Um, whether you've been to Zambia before, whether you sponsor a few kids, or whether this is your first time hearing about any of this, I just want to let you know the legitimate impact that just one year 
of a sponsorship kid being in school has on not just this kid, but eventually the entire trajectory of a nation. So in conclusion, I'm looking forward to watching Francis continue to grow, go through school, eventually graduate high school, get to college, and eventually be one of the leaders of Zambia that transforms the nation from a suffering one into a thriving one. Thank you.